The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 14th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that early. Send it out to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a mixed bag out there. That mix is only coming from the semis, which are up 75 points, about a half percent. The other U.S. indices are trading to the downside. The Dow is off 185, the S&P 12, the Nasdaq 162, the Russell's down 10. Percentage-wise, the leader is six-tenths of a percent, and that's in the Russell. The semis are off three points are basically flat. All the sectors, with the exception of the XLF, which has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside, that confirmed yesterday, is trading to the downside. The XLF is up about 32 cents, trading out about 32 80 Eight. Lead the charge. Dollar wise, the upside you got BlackRock, three and a half percent, twenty-three bucks. JP Morgan, ten bucks, seven and a half percent. Uh Peakstone Realty up six fifty percent. That's a six buck move. Old Dominion up four uh, bucks. That's a one percent move to the downside. It's service now off twenty-four bucks, five percent. Catalent Inc. is off sixteen or twenty-six percent. United Health Group down about three percent or fifteen bucks. Boeing down twelve. That's a six percent move. HubSpot down eleven. Humana off about eleven as well. That's about a two percent move there. But first, what we should do is uh, so let's just see what's this says, uh, uh, Mr. Rhodes. What do your charts uh, show about the bounce in F? It's not a bounce. It's a confirmed A to B equals C D to the upside. So let's stay on these black background charts. Let's go take a look at those patterns here. Let's put in the XLF charts. So let's get XLF up here. Yesterday it passed that B point with volume. The B point was a swing point out here, uh, Dwayne. Oh, that was Jambalaya. Uh, Dwayne, uh, Jambalaya, that uh, swing point was April the 4th. The volume on that swing, you can see it in the lower left, it's the very bottom inside that box, is 45 million shares. If we take a look at yesterday's high, which was a close above 32.34, was 58 million shares. You now have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside pattern, and its initial price projection is going to be 33.61. I don't believe, Jambalaya, that is where price stops. I believe this will do more than a one-to-one. -one. I think more likely than not, this will go target the top of its Week, the daily profile, 34.29, and 34.14 is the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD pattern. It's only a retracement of about 35%, so 0.382 retracement, basically. And those will typically lead to more than a 1 to 1, so it is not a bounce. It's not even close to a bounce. It is what we call around here at TFNN a confirmed. A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, you do have resistance at 3308. That's the weekly resistance. If you're wondering why did price stop where it did, well, because that's where the sellers were located, right at that 3308. But I do. I believe that this is the top inside of the XLF. 
not the way that it's trading as we speak yesterday and today. And today you already have 28 million shares. We're not even at two hours of trading yesterday. So that's even more volume than what we saw yesterday. So I hope that helped you out there, um, uh, Jambalaya. Dwayne says, uh, thanks for running down on Platinum yesterday. You didn't get a chance to, well, you didn't need to thank me, but you're welcome. But since you're talking about Platinum, Let's take a look at gold. First, we'll take a look at the U.S. dollar index, since we just happen to be on this black set of black, uh, charts out here. And that's going to be the only set of charts that's worthwhile for us to take a look at anyway. It's going to be the upper right-hand panel. So on the upper right-hand panel, so you can see that yesterday price closed below. It's by the D-point pattern. But you're getting, you could potentially get another one today. Uh, so right now, you you know, well, well, let's just see what today's candle session looks like. But the more important thing for you and I, for us to be able to take a look at with regard to the U.S. dollar index, and again, we're using my synthetic version of the contract. The reason that we're using that is because I can uh, grab all kind of historical data in the way that it stitches those contracts together better than the continuous contract, and it provides you and I with some really solid profiles out there. What we can see is so far today, it looked like uh, what the U.S. dollar index was trying to do, at least at the beginning of today's session, was trying to crush through that bullish structured weekly profile. If we did see a close below 100.825, that would then do that. But really what you're looking at is the price point of 100.34. If price closes below that level, we're going to get a strong A to B equals CD to the downside inside the U.S. dollar index. And much like we took a look at with um, the XLF, I don't think this will do just a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. The retracement here is 0.382. It says 37.5. So more likely than not, if we did get a close below 100.34, we'd be looking to move down to the 88 area out there. That is not what I'm saying we have. I'm just saying pay attention. If you did get a close below, that would be the signal. But at this stage here, what has held has been support. And we could get at day's end another buy the D-point pattern. So now let's go take a look at uh, Goldilocks. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and switch uh, uh, our set of charts out here so let me get to those and we'll change the actual screen for you and we'll take a look at gold what you'll see here momentarily is you will see in the case of gold a roads momentum indicator signal and i'm going to expand out the daily time frame so price has been moving higher it's been doing a less relative energy out there and that always says just pay attention because if you did get a bearish reversal candle that's going to confirm a top so now we take a look at goldilocks that a appears to be what we will receive today, no guarantee. If we do, we can see that price is below that green oscillator and change line. So from a daily standpoint, it's telling us that gold has lost its momentum. And that would then signal a move back to support. Now, on the daily time frame, or at least this set of charts out here, um, what I've got for support is that 1992 would be the next level, 1974 below that, and you could even see a move back to 1847. That's not going to happen unless you get a close below 1974. 1847 happens to be the TD9 count breakout level on the daily time frame for Goldilocks. Now, when I started the show, I said the next hour or so is going to be really important when it comes to gold. And the reason that I said that was because on a 60-minute time frame, lower right chart, let's go ahead and expand that out, that was completing a TD9 count bottom. So this is very cool. And what I mean by that is if price closed below that low, that low is 2011.10, 2011.10. 2011 if price closes below that on an hourly base, that tells us we've got lower price. And those daily levels that we just took a look at, they would definitely come into play. Now, the 30-minute time frame, now what should take place here this price should bounce up towards the soft center and change line while that continues to move lower, and those two should meet. We have a 30-minute Rhodes momentum indicator top, but also a TD9 count pattern that is going to complete at 12 noon. You are already in bar number nine right now. That completes another 16 minutes out here. You can see a lower low, so we've got two TD9 count bottoms out here, the 30-minute and the 60-minute. Those are the charts you want to pay attention to today. They can tell us a lot about what gold's intention is next week. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so now back to these uh, gold charts out here. Uh, just to finish this up, we can see on the 120-minute time frame right now, price is dealing with its breakout level of support of 2014.90. If it can, uh, that uh, two-hour chart, I believe it's 10 a.m. that this bar, yeah, no, it's 12, yeah, 12 noon, 10 a.m. Hello, Stevie. Uh, 12 noon when this bar completes. So watch 2014.90 at noon. 2005.90 is the uh, four hour and uh, 2002 is the five hour. But all the three of those were the TD9 count breakout levels. I would say that if we get a close below 2002.50, that uh, we may have seen a significant top inside of uh, Goldie locks out here. In other words, yesterday we took a look at it and we were take a look at the gold charts. Well, let's just pull them up. Let's just not, you know, doesn't mean everybody was listening to the show yesterday, Stevie. So let's go take a look at those gold charts out here. I, I don't recall who asked the question. It might have been Dwayne, the bathtub, uh, but I, I could, could easily be wrong on that. But there was a question yesterday what I thought about whether gold was going to take out the highs this, this time around. And my take on it was no. My take on it was no because this is the third time up uh, after the highs were formed back here that we're taking a look at in 2011. That first time was right here in August of 2020. That second time was in March of 2022. And this is the third time. And typically what we find there is that it's the fourth time that is the charm, not the third time that it's the charm out there. So we really want to, did I, did I change that screen? Yeah, I did. What we really ought to do is pay attention to those white background charts and those key levels of support out there because that could then be setting up a, a nice move to the downside that would then be the final, oops, I, geez, Louise, Stevie, back up here. That would then be perhaps the final um, entry into a goal before it really does take off topside. So that's just the, the, the hypothesis that Stevie's going with at this uh, moment in time. Uh, give me a second here, if you would. Well, you don't have a choice, do you? Because you're over there. We see the chart now. Okay. Uh, you only, okay, great. Okay. Thought maybe there was somebody on the line. So, so, um, so back to gold. Well, I think that's it for gold. Nothing else for me to really share with you there. Um, 
as far as where, you know, is it likely to pull back to if it breaks, if these TD9 counts uh, fail? Again, it's towards the bottom of that profile, bullish profile. So let's just call it 65 to 73, somewhere right in that range is where I would expect price to fall back to. But, <laughs> excuse me. I would think we'd even get a deeper retracement should that, in fact, unfold. So the U.S. dollar index uh, may have something to do with that. The reason I say may is because uh, that correlation has started to become unglued out there as well. So I don't want to just rely upon that. Let's go to the first question that has come in. Really not the first question. We've answered a couple of questions out there. But uh, let's go to the uh, question that's come in via email. And that's from Brent. And Brent wants to, his question basically is, do we see anything short-term wise with regard to the equity charts out here? So let's get back to this set of uh, tools. Here's the NQ. So let's try to answer that in the NQ. So Brent, when I take a look at the NQ, what I have out here on a 30 minute basis is a TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom formed at nine o'clock this morning. That TD9 count bottom is still in place. That was tested as we came on the air at 11 o'clock. Price right now is just simply consolidating with inside this profile. Let me just expand out this set of charts here. So you've got a TD9 count bottom. I would say your price closes below this on the uh, NQ closes below 13101 odds favor were headed lower with 12957 being a price target otherwise it could just be a good old fashioned little consolidation day with that TD9 count bottom holding and price trading between it and maybe the uh, 13184 or 132150 level but is that a sign of uh, you know is there is there are there excellent signals out here there are not there are none. I don't see those excellent signals. The 15 minute, the 10 minute, same kind of thing. Formed those bottom patterns. Price got back there, tested and rejected it. Um, but the retracement was so deep, that's why I say it could lead to just simply sideways chop and sideways consolidation. Now that's the NQ. Let's go check out, let's go check out the Dow, really. So let's go take a look at it, see what it is uh, doing out here. So, um, and what the NQ needs, well, we're on the, already on the Dow, so forget about what the NQ needs. Give me a moment out here. Um, what was that? Joe, we've got a caller in the line. It is John in Philly. Hey, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well. Uh, uh, tell me, have you uh, put your rowboat away yet? <laughs> Luckily, uh, that is much further south than me. That's a half an hour south of us. But, uh, you know, that day, that that uh, was a couple days ago, What John's referring to, I believe, is the uh, major storm that we all had down here. We hadn't had rain for like uh, months for the, for the most part. And just the deluge down at the Fort Lauderdale Airport and that vicinity. I was driving over to Naples that day through just, you know, I mean, the rain was, was just coming down in buckets, but very surprised to see that out there. So um, I'm pretty good. I don't need the rowboat, at least not just yet. But thank you for asking. Well, Steve, I'll just, uh, just, just to add to the, uh, the topic of weather curiosities, I will share this. Uh, here we are, April 14, a mere, not even 20 days ago, I think it was um, March 25th, we received one foot of snow in six hours' time. That is a and lot. Then, and then yesterday, excuse me, and then Wednesday and Thursday, we had high temperatures up at 82. Wow. So, uh, so wow. go figure the, uh, the craziness the weather gods are sending to us. Yeah, yeah. Hey, maybe they don't like what they see going on around the globe. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, that's, maybe, maybe, maybe that's I'm their calling signal. merely to supplement yes. the uh, discussion you just shared with uh, all listeners on Comex Gold. And that is simply this. And it is using uh, the tool you discovered back in 2013, that of using the apogee and perigee pivots yes, uh, based off the lunar cycles. Um, I will share this with you. Um, we've had this very abrupt reversal. Of course, we all see that. Yes. Of interest, however, is two things. Um, here's the bottom line. If I were a trend if i were a trend trader looking to short to mm -hmm. be short mm -hmm. uh, the rule i would be using just for myself is i would not be because 
Here I'm looking at June COMEX gold at 2013. Now mm-hmm. it's down markedly, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. interestingly enough, Apogee pivot is at uh, 19.99. So price mm-hmm. is still above Apogee. Absolutely. Uh, parenthetically, I'll just say this weekend, I believe it's it's either tonight or Saturday, we have lunar perigee occurring. So come Sunday night's open, we'll have a new pivot with which to work based upon, you know, Friday's close and Sunday's opening price that can give some assistance to those looking to be a trend cha- uh, trader potentially uh, against the apogee perigee pivot. So I just wanted to share that. Hope that helps. Well, that is great. And, and so just to supplement what you said, and I've got this up on our screen. It's a lower, well, I'll just make it the entire, whoops, I'll make it the entire screen now. What John's referring to, so he, he, a couple different things. Well, oh, first he's referring to this air, ap, apogee pivot point. Folks, what I want you to know is that uh, price pulled back at 1030 in the morning on April 10th, hit that level and bounced higher from there. Hey, John, thanks for sharing that with us. Have a, a fantastic weekend and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. John in Philly. This is Stephen Delray Beach, and we'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow down 224, S&P 17, NASDAQ 170. We're looking at the uh, charts here for the Dow Equity Future Contract. Just following up on Brent's question, anything that we see on the short term. So on the short term here for the Dow Equity, the uh, 10 minutes got a uh, TD9 count bottom. It's going to complete at 1140. It should give us a bounce up into about the 34.025-ish area. But when I take a look at the other charts out here, Brent, the other time frames, I do not see any kind of a bottom pattern. 
The 120 minute chart um, is testing a profile support up at the 33, you want me to hear 33, 938. But Roach Mentum Indicator tops in the five hour and the four hour chart here. Their levels of support are 33,904, 33,796, and 33,577. That's on the four hour. The five hours, 33,886, 33,769, and 33,668. It looks more likely to me, Brent that what, uh, what we're seeing right now, the signals are that we see a lower close versus a higher close. I don't see any snapback uh, signals here. We didn't see it in the NQ. We don't see it in the Dow. So it doesn't mean that it can't happen. It's just that I don't see it as we speak at 1131. That's the home screen. Sorry about that. Thank you. Inside the den. Give me a second here. That was probably Mr. Bill telling me as well. So let me put those charts back up here so that everybody can see. Thank you, Mr. Bill. I am showing the uh, Dow Equity Future contract. That was my intention. So real quickly here, bottom right-hand panel, you'll see the TD9 count pattern. That completes here in another nine minutes. But we don't see any other kind of signals out here on the short term. We can take a look at the top panel here. By the two-hour chart, you can see price point and profile support. Same thing on the four-hour chart and the five-hour. But both of those I have, or all three of those, quite frankly, are going to have uh, topping patterns, Roseman to indicate your topping patterns, just as the 60-minute chart does. 60-minute chart suggests to you and I, Brent, that what the Dow Equity Future Contract wants to do is get back to 33,765. That is its breakout level from the 60-minute time frame. So I'm not seeing what it is I believe that you are looking for out there. It doesn't mean it's not there. It just means that Stevie doesn't see it. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Let's take a look at um, the 30-year uh, Treasury. We're going to take a look at the 30-year Treasury and the TLT for Fletch out here. But first, we'll switch back to those black background screens. We'll just flip to um, not this chart, this chart, this chart. So here, what I'd like you to take a look at here, Fletch, I know you're trading the TLT. But for me, I, I need to take a look at what's going on inside the underlying instruments. So that's going to be basically the 30-year Treasury. I didn't mean to do that. I don't know how that here we go. So now what we can see. So there's no there's no topping pattern. All we have is price getting back to a, a prior swing point high and failing to be able to clear that. So you've got your so-called double top out there, double, triple, quadruple. Um, I would say that this is so the next time up, we might see price break through there. But what we have right now is you only see two profile lines. One at 130.24, that's the top of the profile. And then the bottom of the center at the same point, 129.22. So 129.22, Fletch, is a very key level of support that must hold. If it doesn't hold, that tells you that the TLT is going to be pulling back, and TBT would be the better of the two instruments. It's possible that price will find support here at 130.24. But if it doesn't, then that says that we're going to head lower. So that's the better um, set of criteria or data for you to pay attention to. I will switch over now to the white background chart. So we'll do that and we'll take a look at TLT. Um, give me a moment. We'll get to the actual, the correct set of charts out here and we will see the TLT now. So the TLT, and again, just as a guideline, you know, its price target may be 104.13, the bottom of its profile, but it's really going to be about, you know, what we saw on the 30-year Treasury and does 129.22 hold out there. And if it doesn't, you can forget about 104.13 holding. That actually, quite frankly, might be telling us that price is getting ready to pull back to prior lows out here. But you do have this big gap, so that's a sign of strength, this 102 area. But we don't have that kind of a gap, if you will on the 30-year uh, treasury. So I, I'd really focus on the 30-year treasury. You don't have to trade it, you know, the actual contract, but you do want access to that uh, data out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the TLT. And that was by taking a look at, um, by taking a look at the 30-year treasury as well. And you are more than welcome. Greg writes in and Greg says, good morning. And good morning back to you. Would you take a look at wheat? For me, I trade WAT, but use the uh, ZW contract on Thinkorswim. So, yes, let's do this here. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. give me a moment. Um, will we pull up on this? Let me see here real quickly. So, we're in the May contract. I just have got a different data feed. I just want to make sure that I can pull it up. Yeah, okay, good. We're looking good here. So with regard to wheat, what you have, uh, Greg, is you have a TD9 count bottom that is going to complete today. So that's uh, that's cool. It looks like you also have an A to B equals CD pattern. We'll draw that. It's a small one. doesn't matter whether it's a small one or a big one. But here's the A to B pattern. 
It uh, started with a swing point from the high of March 29th. The B point was uh, the, the following day's low. I'm just simply going to move that A to B over to the C point. There we go. And now what you can see is this is uh, we might, you might get a bullish reversal candle today. Do you need that? No. You've got a TD9 count bottom. And that TD9 count bottom would typically say, well, we're going to go test uh, support. That's the oscillator change line. Well, we're above that level. And we're back inside its profiles. So what we should do here now, assuming that it closes where it does, and you'd love to see this close above yesterday's high. I'd love to see it do that. And then that would then signal move up to 694.95. That would be a resistance or a battleground area. And then above that, you'd be looking at uh, 712.50 uh, uh, as a area. And at 710, you've got your TD9 count breakdown resistance level. On a weekly basis, what you want to pay attention to on your, well, I don't, on your think or swim, you're not going to have the oscillator and change line unless you program that in there. And uh, you want to watch that uh, oscillator and change line because that has really acted as resistance, not entirely since it's moved lower out here. But it certainly has it certainly is a critical point that you'd like to see price close above to at least suggest I might want to take out the profile high at 730.75. Again, that is on the ZW on the monthly time frame. And this is a beautiful thing. And this is the actual May contract. You're going to for this month, you're going to complete a TD nine count bottom. So, you know what that tells us? That tells us that we should all be long wheat by the end of this month out here. Now, what we'd really love to see, Greg might not love to see this, but what I'd love to see, you've got this nice daily TD9 count bottom. And that says as long as price remains above, and I mean closing above, that low, which is 654, you've got a solid bottom in addition to the TD9 count that's completing today. You can see that we're in bar number seven of a TD9 count on the weekly time frame. What we'd really love to see take place, it's not going to be today, what we'd really love to see take place next week is a spike below the low of the session of this pattern so far. And that's bar number five. And that low is at 654 even Steven. That makes sense, right? That's that low of that pattern out there. Uh, yeah, that, that we took away at Rose Mentum Indicator. If he could get a intraday push through that to set up the TD9 count pattern on a, a weekly time frame, boy, that would be that would be a beautiful that would be a beautiful thing out there because then we'd have the monthly TD9 count, we'd have a daily bottom, we'd have a weekly bottom, and then Greg, we'd all say thank you to Greg because he will have taken us into a long term, longer term wheat position. So this is one most certainly to keep your eye on. Maybe we'll get some additional advice there from uh, John Z inside the uh, Tiger's Den, um, who probably has this market uh, nailed. So I hope that helps you out there. Greg, thanks so much for writing in. Much appreciated. I don't see any other questions. I don't see any other questions out here. And so, therefore, um, I'll wait for him. But we're going to go to a break. Steve Rowe to a TFN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got the 30-minute uh, market breath up on our screen right now. This is for the uh, NASDAQ 100. You can see five instruments trading above profile, 65 below. So, Brent, that's another issue, um, you know, that, uh, that you have in trying to take a, a long trade as we speak right now, certainly as of 1142. The S&P 500 for that same time frame, 60 above, 206 below out there. So um, we'll just take a quick peek here at those other four time frames just to see what's going on underneath the covers there and here let's get back to uh, those uh, those levels on the weekly time frame the s p bearish now on the 60 minute bullish on the other three time frames other three being weekly daily and 240 same thing with regard to the nasdaq 100 so in the case of the nasdaq 100 it's 25 above 39 below so we're starting to see that uh, turn a uh, potential turn out there so we'll uh, We'll just continue to pay attention uh, to those markets. Let's get back to some requests out here. This one is from S&P, Insider Tigers. And S&P wants to take a look at CVS, looking for an entry point. So the entry point on uh, CVS, it's trading right about 74.55. I'm assuming I've got a little tad of a delay out here, but let me just check on that. No, I don't. 74.55, at least not on CVS. So CVS is uh, trading inside its swing point from back on March 23rd. So that swing point had volume of 9 million shares. You're at 2.6 today, two hours of trading. You're gonna be pretty close to that volume. I assume it will fade off a little bit towards the end of the day, but you're trading into that swing point. If you do close below 74.22, 7422, and you do it with more than 9 million shares, then odds favor you're gonna go test 72.11. As far as an entry point, this is pulling back. It's pulling back with decent volume. And you've got a bullish structured profile. What I would use as my entry area would be 73.69 to 74.22. You'd love to see that as your entry area, S&P, with price coming in lighter than what it appears to be coming in with now. So I'd say today is not the day. But the question is, over the course of the next couple of days, if it does move lower into that area, is it doing it with less volume or not? On a weekly basis, we're inside that swing point. That did volume of 34 million shares. We're at 38 already this week. This says you've got to wait on CVS because this is pulling back into a weekly swing point, which it rejected 
So it rejected that swing point with 32 million. That was going against 34. That was your test and rejection on lighter volume. Now you're back inside it with volume. I believe that uh, CBS, I think you got to keep your eye on it, S&P. But it looks to me like it wants to at least go tag the bottom of that uh, swing area. And the monthly chart says, CBS, I'll see you. Come, come meet me when you get to 56.19. That's a CD9 count breakout level. It's because price is below the bottom of its monthly profile out there. So I think longer term, CBS looks like it may be in a bit of trouble out there. So I do hope that that helps you out, SNP. And uh, so you've got the area, which is uh, clearly that bullish structured level, 73.69 to 74.22. But really watch the volumes there because that may just uh, have you sit on the sidelines with regard to CVS. Next request was to take a look at this. John C. in the Tiger's Den wants to look at Tesla. Now, Tesla, John, is just consolidating with inside its daily profile out there. And that's from the range of 179.28, 179.28, up to 188.78 out here. Um, what else do we have? We've got a consolidation on the weekly between 176.56 and 217.65. Watch 176.56. Consolidation with inside profiles on a monthly time frame. So I know this is like watching paint dry, which is not a real fun thing to do. But at this stage of the game, you've got just your good old-fashioned daily, weekly, and monthly consolidation between support and resistance going on, which is often what takes place in the market out here. Consecutive days up and consecutive days down. I'm not seeing anything there. That is of uh, use to us. Let's take a last peek here at the 30-minute uh, time frame chart. See if there's anything out here to help John see. John, as we open this chart up here, what we're going to see with regard to Tesla is not much. You're trading below the oscillator and change line and above profile. It's kind of a neutral type signal out here. So we, for, with regard to Tesla, we've got to just simply go with a consolidation. No top or bottom signal to speak of. And just a consolidation between support and resistance. So I hope that helps you out, John C. Thank you so much for taking the time to write in. Nicholas writes in. Nicholas wanted to take a look at the SMHs, which we've got up on our screen right now. And the SMHs are consolidating between their daily profile. That range is 249.86 at support, 263.57 as resistance, but it's got resistance up at the 257 to 258 level. That was the oscillator and change line and center of its profile out there. But that's not what Nicholas's question was. Nicholas's question is, and this has got a top, this has your Rhodes momentum indicator top and no bottom, a top with a consolidation between support and resistance. Not unusual at all. But Nicholas was asking about the seasonality of the SMHs. And those are the uh, charts that we have up on our screen right now. That red vertical line represents where we're at today. We have 22 years worth of data for the SMH. And that's what is showing here, the average price movement, the average directional movement. Remember, the S&P typically makes a bottom in the end of uh, January. Well, with regard to the uh, semis, it's January 21st. It then typically makes a high around June the 5th. Then we get that pullback usually into June 26th or so, and then it moves higher. And then in the case of the, uh, uh, the semis, they move higher into the July 30th level, then pull back into the October time frame, and then they get into that very season favorable seasonal cycle. The SMHs on a Friday, they typically trade to the downside or have on average over the last 22 years. Their best day of the week for trading, Nicholas, is on Wednesday, or at least over the last 22 years it has been. Their worst performing month out here is September. Second worst is June. But May, April, March, February, all about the same, all with a favorable bias out there. Remember, we typically don't see that top inside the SMHs until June. And in June, we've got that down month out there. So those are the seasonal patterns with regard to the SMHs. Of course, we are in a, uh, we do have that top out there. And sometimes, uh, again, no bottoming pattern. Sometimes the way a market will bottom is just coming back to support. You know that. You don't need me to tell you that, but I just did. And so it's possible the SMHs have a uh, bottomed here. What I don't like is prices below the top of that weekly profile. And that would really suggest at least another push down into that 249.86 level, that profile area. 245.19 is the number right now on that weekly time frame. Now, Nicholas, if it's me, my preference is to see that take place. What I mean by that is I really want to see, or you really would like to see, and this is by a Tuesday of next week, a spike below 249.18. If we get a spike below 249, well, 
Yeah, if we get a spike below 249.18 between now and Tuesday on a daily time frame, what that could do is set up a TD9 count bottom. So I'd love that while price in the weekly time frame is testing its uh, green oscillator and change line after it recently changed colors out there. And uh, you got the monthly right now sitting on its green oscillator and change line as well. So that would be the nice setup that we're looking for to support that seasonal pattern. That price should continue to move higher inside the SMHs through about the June time frame. So thanks so much for taking the time to write in. SNP wanted to take a look at Netflix. Let's switch over there real quickly. With regard to Netflix, what do we have here in the daily time frame? You've got a TD9 count top, a TD9 count breakdown resistance that formed on April the 4th. We now have your good old fashioned consolidation with inside his profile. SNP, you're looking for an entry point. We'd say 324.13 or 304.14 would be the best areas, but we'll further look at that when we come back from this break. Z Roads with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow's down 207. S&P's off 18. NASDAQ 180 points out there. We've got the seasonal pattern up here for Netflix up on our screen. And the reason that we've got this up here, well, one, because we can and we wanted to be able to uh, show it. And as we take a look at Netflix, we can see that it is approaching its unfavorable seasonal time frame, which is basically April 17th. Um, you know, it's April 14th right now. We can see that over the last 20 years, April has been its worst performing month. So I think that's really important, S&P, for you and I to, to understand, especially when Stevie was saying, you know what? 
I would choose 324 to 304.14. Right now, I'm going to go with 304.14. You've got the TD9 count top. Now, if price takes that out, obviously, this conversation that we're having here is useless because it will negate that topping signal and suggest we get back to its highs out there. That requires a close above 349.80. Otherwise, let's see if this thing will pull back and get bad use 304.14 as we speak right now. That, that's a seasonal cycle. Uh, so it dips into an unfavorable seasonal cycle, which it doesn't get out of typically until the early part of May out there. So you do have some time on that Netflix, so I would uh, be patient there. I hope that helps you out, S&P. Thanks so much for the question out there, and I uh, hope that that information uh, uh, helps direct you. We've got a request out here from Mimi. I think that's how we'll end the show. Marathon Oil, I believe it is. MRO is the uh, ticker symbol. And Mimi, what you've got out here with regard to Marathon is just simply a consolidation with inside its uh, profile levels. Now, it did confirm a sell the D point pattern. It did that when it generated this bearish uh, uh, engulfing candle on April the 4th. But all that has led to is a movement between support and resistance. Support is at 2532. Resistance is 2668. You're also consolidating with inside the weekly profile. That's between 2420 and 2710 uh, out there. And price has found support at the center of its bearish structured monthly profile. Uh, but price was above that for more than two months and typically that is where you would find price finding support on a pullback. And that's in fact what happened. So Marathon looks pretty bullish when we take a look at the longer term chart out there. And right now what you've got Mimi is just a good old fashioned consolidation. Folks, thanks so much for joining us all week here. Thanks so much for doing that. Stay tuned, we've got great programming lined up. I'll be back with you on Marvelous Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Be safe out there. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.